So I recently posted a study on Twitter, sorry, on X, worst name change ever. And somebody replied to that post of mine with this meme about different foods. I'm gonna blur out the name of the person. I don't want people to go nag him or go make him feel bad about it, but I thought it would be interesting to take a look at this sort of as a case study and try to understand how memes convince us of certain ideas at first glance and how to reason through them. So the meme is very simple. It says foods the USDA warns us against. And then there's raw milk, red meat, butter, salt, etc. Dietary cholesterol, several foods. And then underneath it says world's oldest foods. And it's the exact same foods. So the message of the meme is very simple. The foods that the USDA, the government, essentially is telling us not to eat are exactly the oldest foods that we have. And there's a very clear implication. Oldest here refers to foods that our ancestors have been eating for the longest time and that should be safest, maybe even healthiest for us. In fact, I found another version of the same meme where they wrote in, in red, and healthiest, just in case it wasn't clear enough what the meme was trying to telegraph. Now, first of all, there's something a little strange. Some of the foods in the meme are actually pretty recent evolutionarily. Milk and butter trace back to the domestication of animals 10,000 years ago, give or take. Basically, after the agricultural revolution, which is interesting because a lot of people who subscribe to these ideas of ancestral foods see the agricultural revolution in a very negative light as something of a disaster where we stopped eating these older foods that we were adapted to and we started eating newer foods that maybe our bodies weren't evolved to process and to eat. And yet several of the foods that they chose for the meme are actually more recent even than that. Not just the milk and the butter, but salt also. The earliest records of salt production are from 8,000 years ago, give or take. Obviously our ancestors could get sodium directly from foods. Foods contain sodium. And maybe they could lick mineral deposits that accumulate naturally. But clearly this habit of taking purified salt in grains and uh, sprinkling it on top of every meal to the point where nowadays a lot of Westerners would consider meals almost inedible if they have no added salt. This is a habit that is very recent evolutionarily. Our ancestors in the Paleolithic weren't sprinkling pure salt on top of their foods. Now, of course, this tells us nothing about the actual health effect of foods. The fact that they're relatively recent, milk, butter, and salt, doesn't tell us if they are health promoting or neutral or detrimental. But making this whole argument of old and new foods and then including butter and purified salt is strange. This inconsistency aside, which is kind of a minor aspect, the general idea that the foods that the USDA, the government, warns us against are precisely the oldest foods that we have. This idea does not pan out. The guidelines advise us against ultra-processed foods in excess. That's one of the main features of guidelines all over the world. And those foods are obviously very recent evolutionarily. The guidelines recommend nuts and seeds, but those are very old. There's evidence that our ancestors were consuming nuts and seeds 700,000, 800,000 years ago, at least, if not further back. So that's older than our species, Homo sapiens, by a couple fold and much, much older than several of the foods in that meme. What about pulses? Things like lentils or peas. There's evidence of our ancestors consuming pulses in the Paleolithic up to 70,000 years ago, at least. Again, much older than several of the foods included in this meme. And yet, the guidelines recommend pulses. Mushroom consumption goes back to the Neanderthals, at least, probably much further back. And yet the guidelines don't discourage mushrooms. If anything, they recommend them. What about fish and seafood? Fish is as old as anything on that meme. It's a very old food, evolutionarily speaking. And yet the guidelines recommend fish pretty much anywhere you look. So it goes directly against the idea of the meme. So dietary guidelines recommend some old foods they warn against an excess of others. They recommend some recent foods. They warn against others. So the simplistic message of the meme doesn't reflect reality at all. Alcohol is another interesting example because guidelines warn against alcohol in a substantial amount. And there are archaeological records of alcoholic drinks being brewed 13,000 years ago. That's older than several of the foods on the meme. So alcohol fits the pattern of the meme very well. The USDA warns against it, and it's an old food, at least by the logic of the meme, older than several of the foods on there. So why isn't alcohol on the meme? Because it doesn't fit the message 
that the meme is trying to get across to us. Alcohol is already generally accepted as an unhealthy, problematic food by the vast majority of people. So it doesn't fit this message that the foods the government discourages are actually the foods that are good for us. It's an example of a food where most people who share this meme would probably agree with the guidelines on it, that the guidelines should warn people about consuming substantial amounts of alcohol. So it doesn't fit the emotional message that the meme is trying to telegraph. And memes are mainly about triggering a certain emotion. In fact, people who share this meme would certainly agree with the guidelines on lots of different things. Recommending exercise, discouraging smoking, discouraging a lot of junk foods. Most people agree with the guidelines on lots of different items, probably with most recommendations uh, by guidelines and by professional health organizations. So what this meme does is it selects very carefully specific things where a group of people dislike the recommendations. It's got nothing to do with how old or how new the foods are. Of course, dietary recommendations are not based on how old or how recent a food is. And the health value of foods isn't determined by their historical age either. And actually, everyone agrees with this. Refined sugar, purified white sugar is evolutionarily new and no guideline recommends it. Whereas olive oil, for example, purifying the fat fraction of a fruit is evolutionarily new as well and all guidelines recommend it. And there's a million other examples. So it's all determined by the actual observed documented health effects of consuming different foods or different dietary patterns in human beings eating them, not by when the food appeared in history. And we have videos going over a lot of that evidence for most foods shown on the meme, salt, dairy, red meat, dietary cholesterol. So I'll link a bunch of those in the description below. One last common question on social media is about the changes in foods changes that different foods underwent in recent times. For example, whole grains and fruit have been altered by agriculture, by artificial selection, to be bigger, to be more flavorful, to be juicier, to be sweeter. And so a common question is whether maybe we were adapted, quote unquote, to the ancestral form of those foods, but these newer forms that were crafted, that were selected by agriculture over the last few years, decades or centuries, maybe those aren't appropriate for our physiology. The truth is that almost everything we eat nowadays has been altered extensively for commercial purposes. The grains have, the fruits have, the vegetables have, and the animal foods have as well. Chickens have changed anatomically, dramatically over the last few decades. Cows were extensively artificially selected for commercial purposes over the last couple hundred years. Unless we're hunting wild deer in a forest or we're gathering wild berries somewhere in the wilderness. It's a safe bet that everything we eat nowadays looks and is pretty different from the foods that our ancestors had available. The good news is that all the documentation of health effects of different foods looks at modern products that exist now, not at Paleolithic foods, because those aren't around anymore. It's 100% okay to say, I eat food X because I like it. I don't care about the guidelines. I ignore the guidelines. That's perfectly fine. The guidelines are not laws that we're breaking if we don't follow them. There's really no need to try to come up with these kind of cartoonish arguments like this meme to try to justify our dietary preference. We don't owe anybody an explanation about what we choose to eat. Older foods aren't necessarily healthy. More recent foods aren't necessarily unhealthy. There are lots of foods that do align with that trend. And there are lots of exceptions. It hinges on the actual documented effects of foods in human beings eating them. Here's a lot more on ancestor diets, a whole interview with a paleoanthropology professor, and here's more on the effects of alcohol and why none is probably better than some. Check those out. I'll meet you over there. Take care.